Hey friends, I'm Allie Pierce and I am so excited for today's video because I'm gonna be showing you how to travel the world without leaving Chicago. For many of us, the COVID-19 pandemic has put a hold on our international travel plans for a while, which means many of us travelers are using this time to explore our own backyard. As a born and raised Chicagoan, that means I get to take you along with me as we explore five of Chicago's multicultural neighborhoods. And along the way, I'll be sharing my recommendations on how to safely explore each neighborhood. So leave your passport at home, grab your mask, and let's get traveling. Ooh, and if you want to dive even deeper into each of the neighborhoods we're visiting today, you've got to stay tuned for my Chicago Neighborhood series that drops next week. The first place we're traveling today is Hyde Park, a culturally rich neighborhood known for being the home of former President Barack Obama, the 1893 World's Fair, and the University of Chicago. Start your day by exploring Hyde Park with the help of a Chicago greeter tour. We're gonna to be using these a lot in this video. And what I love so much about these free tours is that they're led by expert locals. So you really get that authentic Chicago experience. Plus they can be completely customized based on your interests. Our tour took us to one of my favorite spots in the city, the University of Chicago campus. We're here, which is right where the pedestrian way starts and it will walk through the historic quadrangles. Founded in 1890 by John D. Rockefeller, the University of Chicago is a historic institution. Now my favorite part about the campus is the Gothic architecture and sprawling green space, which makes you feel like you're across the pond in England rather than in the third largest city in America. After you're done with your tour of campus, head on over to this Subway sandwich shop at the corner of 53rd and Dorchester. And if you're wondering why, let me explain. This little plaque right here just so happens to be the place where former President Barack Obama and his wife Michelle shared their very first kiss. Round off your visit with a stroll through the Japanese garden at Jackson Park, and then treat yourself to a Southern style meal at Virtue Restaurant. Or if takeout is more your style right now, I recommend trying Can't Believe It's Not Meat, which serves flexitarian soul food. Or you can check out Valois, one of Obama's favorite spots in town. And if you're looking to turn your visit into a full-on staycation, then let me recommend the Sophie Hotel, located in the heart of Hyde Park. I love how this boutique hotel pays homage to the intellectual and eclectic vibe of the neighborhood. Every detail, from the artwork on the walls, the music being played, and the books on the shelves, features artists that call Hyde Park or Chicago home. We're off to Little Village, or La Villita, as the locals say. Now, this is where you come for an authentic slice of Mexican-American life right here in Chicago. You can't help but notice the Terracotta Arch, welcoming you to the neighborhood's main drag, where you'll find traditional bakeries, delicious restaurants, and even a warehouse filled with sweet treats. More on that in just a second, but first, a quick bit of history. Now, before the area was known as Little Village, it was home to Czech, German, and Polish immigrants following the Great Chicago Fire. Then, in the 1970s, Mexican-Americans moved to the area and it became known as Mexico in Chicago. No trip to Little Village is complete without two very important sweet and savory stops. First, a meal at Mi Tierra, where as soon as you step through the door, you feel like you're south of the border. The restaurant is the largest Mexican restaurant in the Midwest and a staple in the community. Grab yourself a table and grab a margarita and I'd order the steak tacos if I were you. Now it's time for some dessert at Dulce Landia, the largest retail and wholesale distributor of Mexican candy in the Midwest. If you've got a sweet tooth, you're gonna love this place because inside you'll find more than a thousand different kinds of candy. Next, we're traveling to Sweden by way of Andersonville, a neighborhood on the north side of Chicago that still remains one of the most concentrated areas of Swedish heritage in the US. Now, aside from its Swedish roots, the neighborhood is also known as one of Chicago's largest LGBTQ communities. Book a Chicago greeter tour and learn about the neighborhood's Swedish roots and commitment to local businesses. Andersonville is known as the shop local capital of Chicago because of all the independent boutiques, shops, restaurants that call this neighborhood home. 
Now my personal favorites are Ray Gun for products with a purpose, the wooden spoon for all your culinary needs, and Four Sided for one of a kind gifts. And if you get hungry, just head on over to Clark Street where you've got your pick of locally owned restaurants, craft breweries, and delicious bakeries. Let me personally recommend Lost Larson for freshly baked bread, pastries, and sandwiches, and the historic Simon's Tavern for some frozen Swedish glog. Man, these are good. Trust me on this one. Oh, and you have to check out the Chicago Magic Lounge. While they're unable to operate as normal during the pandemic, they are offering virtual pop-up magic shows until they can once again welcome in guests. Now, before we continue on our travels, I did just wanna give you one quick bonus recommendation. If you're considering combining any of these neighborhoods into like a longer Chicago visit, then I recommend staying at the Hoxton Chicago. The Hip Hotel is centrally located in the heart of the West Loop, a creative foodie focused neighborhood, which makes it a great home base as you explore Chicago's neighborhoods. And if you're looking for some West Loop restaurant recommendations, I've got you covered. Grab breakfast or lunch at Beatrix and order their light and fluffy lemon pancakes. Now for casual food and delicious drinks, check out Bandit. But if you're in the mood for a fresh Mediterranean style dinner, I'd head to ABBA. And if the weather's nice, see if you can snag a seat on their patio. Heading back south, our next stop is bursting with Latino culture, color, and music. And if you guess that we're headed to Pilsen, you'd be correct. One of the first things you can't help but notice are all the colorful murals throughout the neighborhood, which speak to the area's ability to blend art with activism. And if you want to dive deeper into the history and purpose behind these murals, I'm going to once again suggest a Chicago greeter tour. So what's so great about Pilsen is there's seriously no shortage of delicious restaurants to dine at, but I recommend heading over to Cafe Da, which is this Vietnamese style cafe that has amazing chicken wings. Mm. Crunchy. Tender. Mm. So good. And just a little bit spicy. Home to award-winning restaurants, amazing art galleries, and vintage shops, Pilsen stays true to its roots while fostering a flourishing art and food scene. Maybe that's why Forbes named it one of the 12 coolest cities in the world. Yeah. Now before you leave, make sure to check out the murals along the 16th Street Railroad Embankment. It's a two mile stretch of more than 50 murals featuring street artists from around the world. Our last stop of the day takes us all the way to Asia for a little slice of Chinese culture right here in Chicago. And of course, I'm talking about Chinatown. Get ready for the sensory overload you typically only experience when exploring a foreign country. Because as soon as you step into Chinatown, you can't help but feel like you're not in Chicago anymore. My advice would be to book a food tour with the Chinese Cultural Institute and let your belly do the traveling. Here's our hit list. Dim sum at Ming Hin restaurant. Here we go. Order the creamy egg yolk buns. Mm. I'm like savory and sweet. Look at the inside. Next, sample the famous spicy cuisine at Lao Sichuan. Make sure to order Tony's chicken. And after that, you can cool off your palate with some boba tea from Joy Yi Restaurant. Ooh, and round out your tour with a classic Chinese pastry from Chu Quan, Chinatown's oldest bakery. <sighs> That was delicious. But if you're feeling super full like I am right now, you can always round out your day with a little walking guided tour from the Chinese Cultural Institute. And that way you can walk and digest and learn a little history at the same time. And if you've got the time, end your visit with these incredible views of the city at Ping Tom Memorial Park. we've covered a lot, but I did just want to give you one additional bonus recommendation just in case you wanted to explore even more, and that is to come to the West Ridge neighborhood, home to Chicago's Little India. This area is truly a melting pot of cultures, home to Jewish, Middle Eastern, and Southeast Asian communities. 
The crown jewel of the area is Devon Avenue, a two-mile stretch dominated by sari shops, delicious restaurants, and international grocery stores. Grab lunch at Tiffin Restaurant and explore some of the most incredible sari shops outside of India. My favorite is India Sari Palace. While our travels might look totally different than what we're used to, I do think that by exploring some of Chicago's multicultural neighborhoods, we're able to scratch that international travel itch while still staying close to home. So whether you're visiting for the first time or exploring your own backyard, I hope that this video inspires you to explore Chicago while diving deeper into our diverse city. But with that, I'm gonna sign off. Stay safe, stay strong, and just remember that adventure awaits when you choose Chicago. Oh my gosh, that was so much fun. I hope you had fun too. Now, I need to hear from you. Were there any neighborhoods that you wanna explore for yourself that you learned about in this video? If so, let me know in the comments section. And also, if you have some Chicago neighborhoods that you think I need to explore further, give me all your recommendations below. <laughs> I do just need to give a quick and massive shout out to Choose Chicago and all of the sponsors that made this video possible. Because if it wasn't for your help, none of this would have happened. So massive thank you, thank you, thank you. Now you guys, if you want a comprehensive list of all of the places that we visited in this video, plus even more recommendations and a map of all the spots that we visited, you gotta check out my Chicago Neighborhood Guide. I've got a link to that in the description of this video. Also, just wanna make sure that you are aware that my Chicago Neighborhood series drops next week. So basically what I'm doing is taking each of the neighborhoods we visited in this video and diving even deeper with more recommendations, history, and background. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel and you hit that little bell to get a notification when those videos go live. And until then, let's hang out outside of YouTube on Instagram. You can follow me at Allie Pierce and I will check in with you guys next week. So have a great rest of your day, your week, your month, your year, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.